you know what happens all the time. You start building something and you realize you need some small accessory, something that might not be that cheap or that easy to come by. I'm making a costume that requires a little bit of leather strapping on the shoulders and on the sides for some armor. And in this video, we're going to show you how to turn something as simple as some craft foam into some fake leather. It's an easy process. All you're going to need is some foam, an iron, some aluminum foil, and some paints. And when you're done, you have a nice piece like this leather strap. And it won't break the bank because little pieces of leather strap, if you get a 10 inch piece by two, I think it's like $9 on Amazon. This don't cost you much at all. Got to buckle for a dollar. Made the leather with just some scrap foam. Save you lots of money. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to learn how to make faux leather out of foam. Busy house today. I hear toilets flushing and people running around upstairs. But that's, you know, fine. Anyway, I'm going to need some leather strapping for a suit that I'm making. It's going to have straps here and on the sides. And instead of buying leather, uh, I'm going to make some. And I bought these little tiny buckles. I've uh, measured off about what size I want this to be on the bottom of this two millimeter craft foam. So I'll know where to cut it later. And we're just going to make the other side look like leather. And to do that, all we need is some aluminum foil and old iron. You want to turn your iron on to the highest heat possible without steam. You don't want to steam your foam. I've got mine on wool setting. And to make the shapes, we're just going to take a piece of aluminum foil. I like to fold mine in half. Good Lord, people are dying upstairs, I think. And we're going to straighten it out most of the way. We don't want it flat. We want all these cracks and crevices in here. That's what's going to give us our effect. So once we're happy with that, we're just going to set it. We're just going to set it right down on top. I'm going to press, press it down. And the heat's going to transfer through here into the foam. And it's going to leave little creases. Let's see if you can see those creases anyway here. It's difficult to see the creases now, but you can kind of see them. I'm going to repeat that process over this entire sheet. I'm just going to hold it in place for a good 10 seconds or so. Be sure to turn your aluminum foil every once in a while. You don't want an exact pattern. You want it to look different from different angles. And the foam kind of gives off a little bit of stink. You may want to do this outside. All right, once you're done putting all the texture you can, or that you desire, in your piece, we're going to move on to painting it. And paint really requires a brown. That's going to be the base color. Some black that we're going to water down to make a black wash to get down in the cracks and crevices and to make all those little details stand out. And I'm gonna finish mine with a matte varnish just to kind of protect the paint. And got some water to mix with my black and just something I cut out that I'm gonna use as a painting uh, palette. Don't need anything fancy, just got a sponge here and we're ready to go. Start with the brown. Thank you. 
One thing you have to think about with this though is once you're done with this and you cut a slice off, all of a sudden you're going to have yellow on the edges. So always keep a little brown handy because you'll need it. Since I'm using a lighter color foam for my under, um, for my base, I'm going to probably require two layers of the brown. So we're going to finish up this layer. I'm going to speed dry it using a hair dryer. And then we'll add our second layer. Okay, we've got a second layer on there. It's looking a little more brown. We're going to break up that brown with a black wash. I use a lot of black, so when I ordered, I ordered the big containers. I'm actually going to put it in this container. Just don't need a lot. A couple dabs. And then we're going to dilute it with water. There's no perfect ratio, but you don't want it to be too thin. You also don't want it to be too dark or too thick, and you can't really wipe it away. So just experiment, see what you come up with. Same sponge, cleaned out, got a rag to wipe it away. So we're going to just take it, go over an area. It's also going to make it look much colder. As you can see, a little bit got wiped away here, wiped away some of the brown. That's okay because I've got this whole sheet that I'm going to use. Now, I don't want to press hard because I will press or wipe away a lot of the paint if I'm not careful. I'll do it for now. It's starting to look a lot more like leather. I'm going to go over that with my heat gun again to help dry it. Now the parts where the yellow showed through have really started to stand out. You can always go back over it with a little more brown and touch up those areas once you're finished. I'm not going to spend too much time because I just want to really give you this for demonstrational purposes. About 85% uh, to 90% of this is still usable without any touching up. I got a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here. Other than that, the rest is completely ready to use and will look good as leather strap or if you want to make leather wraps for something, this would work great for that as well. Okay, I've gone through and cut out the bad pieces just so I can save these and use them. I threw the parts with the bad yellow blotches away, so I'll just have these scraps that I can use. But as you can see, it's starting to look like a piece of leather, but where I cut it, you can see that it's yellow. So that's something you're going to have to touch up later, or if you can find brown foam to start with, that'll save you a lot of trouble. I did not have any, so I just make do with what I got. So we're going to use this varnish. It is a matte. We don't want a gloss because leather's not naturally too shiny if it's old. So we're going to apply that. Now this is supposed to dry to a matte, non-yellowing finish. And what it really does is help protect the paint job underneath. Gives it a layer of a, a clear coat, basically. That will take most of the damage and wear and tear before it reaches the paint. And that's how it protects it. Now, I could have gone through here and put a third layer of brown, which I probably should have to make this look better. But it's really... A, Depends on how much work you want to put into it. I'm only going to need small sections of this fake leather for my project. I just decided to make it on a whole entire piece to give you an idea of how to make it. The best thing about this is trying to buy leather on Amazon. It's a little pricey. So this will save you a lot of money if you make your own faux leather. 
So that is it. It is all good to go. We're just gonna give that time to dry. That glossiness, that sheen should dissipate as it dries. And you'll be good to go with your new faux leather. Hey, thanks for watching, but before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.